Continuing on from this, I want to quickly mention the devastating and quite embarrassing loss Man United um, suffered at the hands of Fulham the other weekend, um, because I didn't mention it before because I'm still flipping depressed about it. Um, Man United won Fulham 2 at home. Um, and if anything, if you watched the game, you would have known Fulham could have won by far more. If they had their shooting boots on, if they had somebody more clinical up front, if they if we didn't have Onana pulling off some pretty decent saves and some pretty decent clearances from the line, they could have probably easily won this game 4 or 5-1. It was absolutely embarrassing, especially when you can consider the spaces around the pitch. I think Jamie Carragher mentioned it recently, actually. The spaces around the field in our team, the lack of organisation, the lack of structure is such a reflection on Eric Ten Hag the manager and one of the things that I've been really perplexed about I'm okay with United being terrible because we've been terrible for a long time I feel like we have, we're a club that basically hemorrhages money we pay too much money in salaries um, we're just you know we're always going for kind of Galactico players that's obviously hampering us we've got you know we still got players from other managers and regimes still at the club we don't have football people there we're kind of trying to change it now with the minority ownership of Jim Ratcliffe all these issues going along but one thing that I've kind of always hoped for in the short term is that we get a coach in coach the players that we do have and we just play some good football along the way might sign some good players and then little by little we can improve but in the interim Let's just play some good football. Let's 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 just have entertaining matches. Let's just have high scoring matches. Let's just have, you know, a spectacle for the fans to fucking see because we're not gonna win the trophy anytime soon. So when we hire Ericsson Hogg for his work previously at Ajax, none of us are naive enough, I don't think so, to believe that he's gonna take what he did at Ajax and copy and paste it at United. Obviously the Ajax system, the Ajax way, the academy, the way they buy players, the culture around the club is completely different. But the way they played football was a very specific way they played. I recently watched an old game of Ajax versus Real Madrid at Champions League when they're away from home. Superb, one touch, two touch football, right? All these technical players on the ball. And you just assumed if Eric Ten Hag is coming to United, he's going to want a certain type of player. He's going to want to play a certain type of way. He didn't. And that's why I've said from the beginning that I think Eric Ten Hag is the greatest managerial catfish of all time because he sold us a dream that he was going to play a particular type brand of football. Then he came to United and he completely abandoned it. And now we're like gung-ho. Now we're playing this like counter-attacking football, this fast front foot thing that we're not really good at. We don't really pressure teams off the ball. We don't really pass well. We don't keep the ball well. We're not really good at long balls. We're not good at crosses, even though we've got fucking, you know, um, Hoyland playing there when he's not injured. It's all over the place. And the worst thing for me is the organization on the pitch we don't look like a team that trains in certain shapes we don't look like a team that trains with certain tactics in mind it just looks like we go out there and we kind of quote-unquote freestyle it certain players get the ball and it kind of triggers a, a run a movement and uh, you know maybe Bruno Fernandes gets it deep it pops over the front over the top and people just run onto it it doesn't feel like there's any method to our madness and that's the most annoying thing about the Ayrton Hogg tenure it's just there's no method to the madness nothing seems like it's going anywhere anytime soon he spoke about the players coming back from injury that was going to change things it didn't even the run of games that we went on which we won if you're watching those games you would have known that a lot of those results fly to deceive a lot of those results were i wouldn't say unearned but they weren't reflective of the actual game so it's been absolutely terrible for minute one and i wasn't surprised to see us lose the way we did against fulham even though it was a last minute win um i still think they were more than just they were more than deserving of that victory the odd thing to come from it has been the back and forth between Jamie Carragher and Eric Ten Hag because Jamie Carragher went on a pretty detailed scathing uh, rebuttal and breakdown of United's you know shape and defense and lack thereof and he called it out really well and now Eric Ten Hag is firing back and essentially saying no you're wrong we do play a certain brand of football he's just overly critical I'm like bruh are you not understanding what the fuck is going on and part of me now is starting to believe maybe Eric Ten Hag wants to get fired Maybe he doesn't actually want to be here. Maybe he's doing all these things in the hope that he gets fired and he gets a big payout. Maybe that's what's actually going on because I can't understand how his brain can't see what we're seeing and can't understand why we're getting the criticism that we're getting. Even from the own fans, it's fucking delusional. But let's actually see what he actually said. Courtesy of Sky Sports News. Um, Ericsson Hogg has hit back at Jeremy Carragher's objective analysis on United. United's four-game winning run in Premier League ended on Saturday with a 2-1 home defeat to Fulham. Sky Sports um, highlighted um, why recent results have masked the problems with Ericsson Hogg's system. That's true. 
We said that. Myself as a fan, I've said that. On fucking Twitter spaces, on Twitter itself, on forums, on Reddit. I've said it myself as a fan. We've all been saying it. The results have masked our performances. Just because we're winning doesn't mean we're playing well. But we didn't want to listen to it. Especially with the top reds and all the fucking Ericsson Hug inners. I fucking hate them. Mark Robbage included. Continues. But... Eric Ten Hag fired back at Carragher's analysis ahead of the FA Cup fifth round game against Nottingham Forest on Wednesday, saying, some analysts are objective in their comments. Very good advices. Some are very subjective. Jamie Carragher is one of them. For the first moment, he is criticising and now he wants to make his point. In the first half an hour against Fulham, we had a point. He had a point. Fulham surprised us with their midfield setup and we had to find a solution. We did find it after half an hour. That's not true. We played well for maybe 10 minutes. Maybe 10 minutes we played well for. We didn't find solutions. They just sat back and waited for us to fucking lose the ball. And then they obviously countered. They absolutely tore us apart, to be honest. They tore us apart and probably should have won by far more. It continues. I wasn't pleased with the defensive performance. Again, reflection on you. Especially down on the left side. Again, um, it's on you because the team shape isn't where it should be. And that's everything to do with willingness, spirit and passion. That was good in previous weeks, therefore we won football games. See again, lack of accountability and just everyone else's fault but his. Footballers are not robots. Sometimes they have bad days. It was unacceptable and we have to do better tomorrow. Um, the FA Cup represents the last realistic chance of silverware for United. He says we are unbeaten in <laughs> these statistics. Who gives a fuck? We are unbeaten in January and February. We lost one game. It was a poor performance and defeat. We are aware. We want to stay in every competition. We have to win tomorrow. It doesn't change our approach. That is for every game. I know the future, but I look at today. We work on a team development and try to win every game. Personally, for me. I can't wait until he's fired. I'm not going to lie. I'm actively rooting for him to be fired. But I would much prefer that he actually suffer this entire season with us. I don't want him to go now and we have an interim coach. I don't want all that sort of uncertainty. It's not necessary. I want the players and him to suffer until the end of the season because they've made us suffer this whole season. We play terribly. We've been knocked out of most fucking cups. We're not going to probably qualify for the Champions League this season. And it's all over. Cool. You have to suffer with us too. So I hope that happens, but in the end, I feel most likely, most likely Ineos have already made a decision of who they want, who they want, because it, the right was on a wall for him the moment the new owners come in anyway. If, if it was going to be the Qatari-based company buying the whole club outright, whether it was Sir Jim Ratcliffe, I think that right was always on a wall. Whenever new ownership come in, they always want their own people. They want their own managers, own coaches. They want their own people. It is what it is. So I think he would have known that unless he won stuff, unless he was, we were playing good football, unless we were finishing the top four, it all but guaranteed he's going to be told to kind of leave in my personal opinion, I think it'll be good because legit, he's been one of the most biggest disappointments when it comes to a coach because I didn't expect him to come in and help us win the league, win the Champions League. I honestly wasn't thinking that. I just thought he was going to come in. He's going to give us a, you know, have us playing good football, have us build a good foundation from that and go from there. But that never happened. And to be honest, he deserves every fucking criticism he gets, especially the players. I want them all gone too this summer, by the way. But I think his lack of understanding of what's happening, this re refusal to adapt, his, to his refusal to implement his own style of play into the players and just adapt to them has also been concerning. His faith in certain players, um, his refusal to, to identify who the good players are and played like it's all over the place i fucking hate it but i hope he has to suffer for the rest of the season because we have suffered too because we have suffered too